as you can tell, this is something quite obviously wrong with this firearm. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com. As some of you may know, we are already involved in a business with our Ammo Mart company and we sell a ton of ammunition nationwide of various calibers. Through those associations, I am generally in contact with people that kind of send me along some interesting stories. And what I have in front of you today is kind of an epic failure of a Smith & Wesson Model 642 that was actually caused by a squib load. For those of you who aren't aware, a squib load generally means by most people's definitions that once the trigger was activated, the projectile went down the end of the barrel, but not far enough to actually leave the end of the muzzle crown. So basically it's lodged somewhere in the length of the barrel. And then what happens is the shooter will attempt to fire another round. All firearms are subject to squib loads up to and including artillery pieces. And for you guys that are interested in Googling it on the internet, you can really find some dramatic pictures of firearm failures due to squib loads. But what I'd like to do today is actually show you one that I have come in custody of. And as you can tell, this is something quite obviously wrong with this firearm. Before we go any farther, let me tell you that the Smith & Wesson Company and certainly the 642, this happens to be an aluminum framed firearm, is an excellent handgun for sure. And as we go forward, bear in mind, the handgun was not the source of the problem. It actually functioned as it should and still in some small way manages to continue to function quite well, which we'll cover towards the end of the video. Most of the time, squib loads are caused by a negligent powder insertion when the ammo was actually manufactured, which means there's enough powder in there to get a like discharge, but not enough to get the projectile, as we said, to leave the end of the barrel. So what I have here, this, this particular model of 642 began its life with a barrel length of about an inch and seven eighths. This, once the uh, failure happened, took a long time to find. It was down towards the end of the range. And we'll try to get some good views. You can actually see the lead head projectile stuck in the end of the barrel. What makes this very interesting to my mind is that kind of a combination of a lot of perfect factors coming together in that the projectile actually went far enough into the barrel to not interfere with the next round being loaded. So it went sort of past the forcing cone, but obviously not out the end of the barrel. And what makes this thing kind of interesting is to this day, this firearm actually continues to lock up. It indexes well. The crane is not damaged in any way. Cylinder closes and locks and still has what appears to be as much as you can tell, perfect timing. In my mind, a very well-made firearm, but catastrophic failure with the squib load. Now, the real purpose of today's video is this. There are indications to the shooter that you have potentially created a squib load. They are in no uncertain prioritized order, but one, the recoil impulse will be completely different it obviously isn't going to recoil with as much force or in the same way as, if you, as it happens when you shoot a normal bullet. The other thing that happens is there should be a dramatic audible difference in what happens once the trigger is activated. You don't get the bang flash like you do under normal conditions. You get more of a ping or a pop. And basically what you're hearing is the primer ignition, not necessarily the big report that you would be expecting. Another thing the shooter should keep in mind is this. If you've been putting holes in paper, and there are some, some obviously limitations to what I'm about to say next, and you don't see a corresponding hole in your target, that bullet had to go somewhere. So it is true, yeah, it could be a complete miss, but if you're expecting a hole in the paper and you don't find one, please check your firearms. And before we go any further, Bear in mind, squib loads can happen to semi-automatic pistols as well. Revolvers are not more prone to them than anything else. I just happen to have a revolver failure available to me. 
So we have different recoil impulse, different audible sound, and perhaps no hole in the target. While we're talking about holes in the target, obviously if you've been shooting for a while and there's a lot of holes in the target, that's going to be harder to detect. And it will certainly be harder to detect if the target is far away from you and the holes aren't quite as discernible. So that, like I said, has some variations to it, but it's definitely something that we should keep in mind. Most of the time you can tell before you blow your gun up that you do have a squib load if you as a shooter come to the range with a purposeful practice in mind. And what I mean by that is if you're mindlessly just sort of operating the gun, this can be the result. Now, th don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming the shooter for this. As we stated, 90% of this is caused by a negligent powder insertion into the ammo. Which brings me to another point. I've always told people that if you buy, and sometimes at gun shows, and this I'm sure it's pretty prevalent, now that ammunition is harder to come by. If you don't know the individual that made the rounds, I would probably coach you to stay away from them because if you don't know how diligent they are at actually manufacturing their own ammo or you have no idea what the source of the ammo is, it might be a good idea to stay away from it or be more and more diligent while you're on the range about the potential of having a squib load because as you can tell, the results are a catastrophic failure. So let's talk about remanufactured ammunition, if we could, for a second. When I meant that you have to be careful about buying reloads that you don't know the source of, I really wasn't referring to factory remanufactured ammunition. That is always subjected to very, very high standard quality control. The bullets are weighed. They're randomly sampled. I was more referring to some ammo that you might potentially purchase off of your buddy who's for the first time got his reloading press and wants to take his hand at making some ammunition. Now, there are some people for sure that make extremely good quality, consistent, and very safe ammo. But if you don't know the individual making the round or anything about its source, I would tell you to potentially be very wary of it and you'll have to increase your diligence while using it on the range. Bear in mind, this particular accident resulted in no injuries to the shooter involved. Luckily, he walked away unharmed. I'm sure eyes as big as, as dinner plates, but he was in fact unharmed, which is a good thing. One of the other things that you could potentially watch for with a squib load is when the barrel is plugged, obviously the gas can't escape at the end of the barrel. And you may feel a very odd hot gas going backwards, especially with a revolver because of the nature of it being more open, the gases have to escape somewhere. So potentially you'll know when you fire the round and the bullet doesn't leave the barrel and you feel some hotness on your hand, those gases are escaping in the wrong direction. Telltale indicator that something might be wrong. So we covered earlier some of the conditions or situations that might lead the shooter to believe that he has a squib load. The question before us now is what to do if you believe that you have a squib load. In this case for the revolver, what you want to do obviously is immediately take your finger off of the trigger and safely pointing the weapon in a safe direction. If the hammer is back, we have to ease the hammer forward in order to do that because if not, we will not get control of the cylinder. What we need to do is make an immediate inspection of the barrel with a light, some form of uh, even a rod to make sure that the projectile actually did fully exit the barrel. If you happen to be operating a semi-automatic pistol, we obviously want to remove the magazine, lock the slide to the rear, obviously while using the safety features on the gun and keeping your finger out of the trigger, and once again, do an inspection of the barrel before you continue shooting. I hope you guys have learned something from this. I always wanted to see a failure of a squib load and never had one this dramatic. So I'm glad this was all available to me. You guys continue to stay safe and thanks for supporting the channel.